Oh, Gary, Nassai, Minasan. Today, we're gonna talk about Kamen Rider Geeks episode 10. Very fun and messy episode this is. A lot of information has been dropped to us just like that. And it is up to us to pick it out ourselves. And here we got five different, oh, not five, four different information that we need to go through. First of all, we need to go through Ukiyo as wishes. Secondly, we need to talk about the DGP. Thirdly, we need to talk about the character. And lastly, we need to talk about the Jamato. So first, let us start off with Ukiyo as wishes because the wishes that we know of so far are two wishes, star of the stars of the stars. And another one is the DGP management to be the family of Ukiyo S itself. But now in this episode, it has been revealed to us that S actually wishes for himself to participate in every single DGP that is gonna take place. And then the second card that Sumeri actually put down is that Ukiyo S also wished that he could be in a war where he can live without walking at all. So that is that actually makes quite a lot of sense because in the first episode, in the first scene, when Sumori approached S Ukiyo, like S is like just looking over the, the sea and he's not walking at all. He's not doing anything. And he, I feel like he's just traveling all over the world and maybe he's looking for his mother, okay? So like he traveled all, all over the world looking for the mother and then Sumori actually approached him to ask him about the do you want to be a part of the DGP something like that so this is really really interesting and then the third wishes we already know style of the style of the stars and lastly is the DGP management becoming the family of Ukiyo S does this mean that S Ukiyo lies when he says that he has joined the DGP ever since the first AD I would say this is not a lie from my deep study of Kamen Rider Gates, I have concluded that S. Ukiyo never lies. The only time that he lies is that he lies about him lying to someone. Okay, so that is the only time that he lies. But other than that, he never lies. So with that theory in mind, I would say S. Ukiyo has participated the DGP since the first AD, correct. But from there, he learned a lot of the rules of the DGP. And one thing we need to take note is that S never actually wishes that he actually retain the memory of the previous war. But for some reason, every single time when he actually started the war, he still have the memory of the previous war. We, when we look at Neon, when we look at Kewa, when we even look at Michinaga, none of them remembers what happened in the previous war. But S is the only one that remains the previous war even before he touched the desire driver, before he touched his ID core itself. So I would assume that in the past, in the first AD, like one of the DGP he won before, he actually wishes to have all the memory from all the war that he has been to. And that I, I felt like that could actually be the reason why S actually remembers all the previous timeline, all the previous war that he has been in. And may, you might be wondering to yourself then, like how come Sumori only show us four stack of wishes from Ukiyo S? And I felt like maybe there is a way for S to wish for like, I, I want everyone to forget about me even the dgp like i don't want i don't want anyone to remember me so that he he can just disappear from the war he doesn't want to become the desire god anymore maybe that is the case but we also can assume that as wishes for a wish that he could actually live as an immortal or something like that he maybe he wishes that i can meet my mother one day I, I will not die until i meet my mother or maybe he also utilized one of the wishes in the dgp to wish for immortality for his own mother as well and that is why he kept on looking for the mother until this very day so there's a lot of theory that we still we got a lot of theory but we don't have a lot of information to go and really deduce whether or not S. Ukiyo is really 
from the past, from the ancient first AD century, something like that. So this all of uh, all of the things that I have just said are theory speculation. If you want to chip in, let me know in the comment section below. What do you think about the wishes of S Ukiyo? And let me move on to the second thing we need to talk about, and that is the DGP. This episode gave us three details that I felt like we really, really need to think hard about. Firstly, Sumori dropped a very, very big Nani the F-bomb for us during the first few minutes of the series from the, uh, from the episode itself. Sumori mentioned something about we need to summon a strong rider to take down Giz. When Su Sumori said this, I was like, Nani, hold up a minute. This is clear confirmation for us that the DGP can select what rider to to enter the DGP and he can they can actually sabotage with other rider itself so this is really really interesting this would actually means that the DGP management is now currently actively trying to stop Gates from winning the DGP itself and that is why Buffa always got invited back to the DGP itself because Buffa have that desire to overcome Gates like every single time Buffa is there with Gates at the final round of every single DGP that they have participated in together and speaking of Ukiyo as wishes I feel like Buffa the first time the, the first wishes that as Ukiyo win that DGP round is the DGP round where Buffa friend actually dies and then the second round is is we don't actually get to see that but that is the 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 second round is where Buffa meets Giz and then we, we we know what happened okay we know what happened in episode 1 so very very fun stuff there so this actually give us confirmation like why does the game master in the first arc of the series actually show Buffa and Giz together on one of the episodes I forgot when already but I, f I really felt like the DGP is actively trying to stop as Ukiyo from winning the DGP once again. So this is really, really fun, really, really interesting stuff. But the second thing that we learn from the DGP is how the hell did the Game Master select the rider to participate in the DGP itself? Because I felt like they are only gonna select people who actually have the desire to join, to, to, to have a desire to do something. Or maybe they are only selecting people who are actually involved in the previous Jamato incident itself. Like maybe they got trapped or they got killed by the Jamato before and they got resurrected. So that is why they are able to participate in the next DGP because the DGP already have their data in a sense. Okay, so this is just a theory, but the Game Master is actually the one that selects the rider and this is really interesting information because in episode 9 it has been revealed to us oh the game master is actually Giroli but I have a sneaky suspicion that it might not be the case the real game master might not be Giroli it might be someone else okay it might be Sumori we do not know but it really it, I just have a strong feeling that the real game master is not Giroli. Giroli is kind of like the supervisor of the game itself, but he, he is not the mastermind, I would say, okay? I really felt like, because in this episode, someone actually notified Giroli and and I, like kind of like Giroli actually asked the person, so have you, have you, have you confirmed the selection of the, uh, have you confirmed to add additional Kamen Rider into the DGP, something like that. So this means that the Giroli itself might not be the Game Master itself. Maybe someone else is in control. Maybe there are other factors that we haven't actually taken into account of yet. But I have another theory. Because of what happened in this episode, we actually get to see Neon's father is the one that encouraged Neon 
to participate in the DGP itself. So what if the Kurama Foundation, the Kurama company is one of the sponsor for the DGP itself and the one that calls the DGP and trying to add the daughter into the DGP itself is the father himself because like the father herself because like it, the Neil's father definitely seems a little bit sus when he actually walks into the room and asks Neon like, "Are you sure you want to marry this guy? Are you are you sure you doesn't you don't have a desire that you want to fulfill something like that?" So it, this is really really sus, okay? Because both the mother and the father experience that Neon got kidnapped as a kid, but. In the first arc, we never get to meet the father at all. We only see how the mother is the one that is actively trying to keep Neon staff, trying to keep Neon in the house. And Neon, for some reason, okay, we're gonna talk about this later, but go back. The real Game Master, like I said, two theories. The first theory is that Girori might not be the real Game Master. The second theory is that the person that is communicating with Girori are the sponsors of the DGP itself because in order for them to operate this they definitely need some sort of financial capability or they, it has to be a reason why they are actually doing this DGP stuff in a game setting okay there has to be a reason and based on what we know is that our writer Yuya actually best this Kamen Rider Gates on the concept of Squid Game and also Kaiji. So in Squid Game, we know there is a spectator watching them fight. So this is really, really interesting stuff. We are not, we are really not sure, okay? Really not sure what is actually happening, but really, really fun stuff that we actually get to learn here from the DGP itself. But let us move on to the character because this is the biggest Nani the F thing we saw in this episode. Kewa's and Neon's personality changed entirely. Like the desire for Kewa to, to protect the world, to be the good guy wherever he goes, is gone. No more. That, that Kewa is gone from this episode. When we saw Kewa, he is scratching the lottery ticket. And this is actually really, really sus because Sarah actually says that aren't you the guy that is gonna donate whatever money you have to the NGO? Like why are you using your last money to buy this lottery ticket? This isn't you, Kwa. And then when the when the sister actually asks Kwa, hey, nah, let, let me treat you something to eat. And then Kwa says sushi instead of the tanuki soba. The sister was shocked. What? Sushi? What about the Tanuki Soba? Something like that. So this is really, really sus. Like what happened to Kewa? Like even Neon. Neon also become like what happened to her, man? Like before she even joined the DGP, we already know that she is actively trying to escape her house, actively trying to, to, to kind of like pursue her dream even without the DGP itself. So like, what changed? Like, why in this new world, Neon is so obedient to the mom itself? Like, there has to be a, a weird thing that is going on here. And my biggest theory on why Kewa and Neon changed so much, it is because they are being, their mind, their memory has been manipulated by the DGP itself. And I felt like this is quite obvious because they need to forget about the DGP. But in order for them to not remember the DGP, the DGP need to take away their desire. And, and for that, Kewa desire is like, <laughs> he, they need to take away his desire to eat the Tanuki Soba and his passion for the, for the Tanuki Soba. And maybe also partly because in the first episode, the first time Kewa meets the Jamato is in the Tanuki Shoba shop. And the reason why he chose to become a rider is because he saw that the Tanuki Soba master died and then got resurrected once again. So that is the reason why he fight because he doesn't want to see that happen again. So Kewa reason of fighting is the Tanuki Soba master. So maybe their, their idea of 
helping Keiwa to not remember the stuff is to take away Tanuki Soba from his mind so that he, the possibility of Keiwa accidentally remembering about the DGP is reduced to zero. Because one thing we know for sure is that human memory is very very powerful human minds are really amazing like you can delete memory but there is there there is definitely a way for human to remember because human minds are so complicated okay so that is my theory on why kwa's personality changed so much because character kwa as a character has always been segi no mikata and he loved tanuki soba so they took away this two thing from him so that he won't remember anything about the DGP itself. Then what about Neon? Neon's strongest desire is to leave the house to find true love. So that, and, and then by allowing Neon to believe that the mother is like to be submissive to the mother, Neon would not actually remember her desire to leave the house, would not remember the DGP. If she doesn't try to keep on escaping, she won't, she won't actually felt a sense of deja vu, I would say, okay? So very, very interesting stuff that we learned here. But the real answer to why the personality changed for both KY and Neon, we still do not know, okay? So this is very, very interesting stuff. But like I said, the, the father of Neon is really, really sus. Like for some reason, like I just have a strong gut feeling that the father is involved one way or another with the DGP itself. And it is really crazy to see the father encouraging Neon to pursue her dream, to, to chase after her desire to find true love. That is really, really something else. Okay, so lastly, talking about the character, we, we cannot not talk about the beat rice buckle. So cool. So, how do I say like, not gonna lie, I really love it. I really love the beat rice buckle. The aesthetic, the, the beat that they give off, really amazing stuff. But one thing that I also realized about the beat rice buckle is it almost seems like it can also be used for Kamen Rider Punk Jack because the the way the Nago actually paused when he used the electric guitar is the same pause that Punk Jack poses when he uses the electric guitar. So maybe we're gonna see Punk Jack using the beat rice buckle as well. And then Nago is gonna find another rice buckle. But the beat rice buckle is definitely really, really OP. It has the ability to nerf Jamato, but at the same time, it has the ability to buff your teammate, to buff other rider. So that is really, really crazy, okay? So I, I'm not so sure what is gonna happen, but definitely really, really interesting. Before I move on to talk about the Jamato, last thing I wanna talk about the character is that in this episode, S actually tells the truth on why he still wants to participate in the DGP to Neon, okay? Like, he, he said that you want to get separated from your mom, but I want to find my mom. So, S actually tell the truth to Neon. So, that is really, really interesting. And I'm really curious to see how this, this is going to progress in the future. But sadly, we I don't know how KY is going to enter the DGP in the next few episodes because we, we actually... We are actually gonna get Keiwa in the movie crossover between Kamen Rider Gates and Kamen Rider Revised um, movie Battle Royale. So Keiwa is teased to us in the poster. So one way or another, Keiwa needs to come back to the DGP before the 23rd of December. So I'm really, really excited to see how KY is going to come back to the DGP. It is going to be a lot of fun. And maybe they are going to just summon the, the rider back because how the Jamato actually got too strong out of a sudden. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about now. The Jamato is evolving. They are getting stronger and stronger. And we are not sure why, 
But in this episode, we actually get to see the Jamato wearing some human clothing. So maybe that is a little bit of hint on what is actually happening. The Jamato is transforming human into Jamato and using their power or something like that. Or maybe they are using the power of the Kamen Rider. We do not know. Next episode preview, we actually get to see Girori saying something like, Hey, this is not my plan. What is happening? Why is this happening? This mean that the gil this mean the DGP is gonna lose control of the Jamato. Maybe all this while the DGP has been utilizing the Jamato as an entertainment for for the public, for the people who actually sponsor the DGP. But now that the DGP, uh, now that the Jamato is actually fighting back, this could actually be a big big problem for the DGP itself. So that is why maybe they are asking K1 to come back into the DGP as an additional rider because they realize that they need more rider on hands, hands on deck to fight the upcoming wave of the Jamato. So that is really, really interesting. And one thing we know for sure about Kewa is how lucky he can be, okay? Like, he is lucky when it counts, but he's unlucky outside of the DGP itself. So he like, he loses his luck, okay? Like, when he was scratching the lottery ticket, he couldn't win. Like, I, I was saying like, that is gonna be really, really sad, okay? I'm not gonna lie. But, this is the thing that I want to talk about. Jamato is getting stronger. We actually get to see Jamato using the the rider rider the desire driver and also a Jamato rice buckle. So oh my god, this is scary, man. But this the the way the Jamato actually looks is the uh, direct opposite to what the rider actually looks like. Because one thing that you notice is that the 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 right hand of the desire driver is for the upper body and the left hand is for the lower body for but for the jamato the left hand is for the upper body and the right hand i would assume is for the lower body we need to look at what happened in the next episode to find out what is actually happening next episode is gonna be huge because they are gonna play one of the most annoying game in video game history and that is protecting the protecting the npc against a group of monsters as they walk slowly through the the mess something like that okay it is gonna be one of the most annoying annoying quests in any game if you are a gamer you would know how annoying it can be so next episode is gonna be very intense very fun but that is all from me 20 second a uh, 20 minutes 20 second minute video I'm not so sure how many of you watch until the very end of the video, but if you made it this far, I just want to encourage you to write the word heaven in the comment section below because if you watch Kamen Rider Black Sun, you will know what heaven actually means. That is all from me. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts, your theory, everything. Just drop it in the comment section below. And that is all. Make sure to hang in that red button into a silver button before you leave. And I'll be seeing you guys on the next one. Goodbye.